Sadaku and the Thousand Paper Cranes by Eleanor Career. Prologue. Sadaku and the Thousand Paper Cranes is based on the life of a real little girl who lived in Japan from 1943 to 1955. She was in Hiroshima when the United States Air Force dropped an atomic bomb on that city in the attempt to end World War II. Ten years later, she died as a result of radiation from the bomb. Her courage made Sadaku a hero to children in Japan. This is the story of Sadaku. Chapter 1. Good Luck Signs. Sadaku was born to be a runner. Her mother always said that Sadaku had learned to run before she could walk. One morning in August 1954, Sadaku ran outside into the street as soon as she was dressed. The morning sun of Japan touched brown highlights in her dark hair. There was not a speck of cloud in the blue sky. It was a good sign. Sadaku was always on the lookout for good luck signs. Back in the house, her sister and two brothers were still sleeping on their bed quilts. She poked her big brother, Masaru. Get up, lazy bones, she said. It's peace day. Masaharu groaned and yawned. He wanted to sleep as long as possible. But like most 14-year-old boys, he also loved to eat. When he sniffed the good smell of bean soup, Masaharu got up. Soon, Mitsu and Ije were awake too. Sadaku helped Ije get dressed. He was six but he sometimes lost a sock or shirt. Afterward, Sadaku folded the bed quilts. Her sister, Mitsu, who was nine, helped put them away in the closet. Rushing like a whirlwind into the kitchen, Sadaku cried, Oh, mother, I can hardly wait to go to the carnival. Can we please hurry with breakfast? Her mother was busily slicing pickled radishes to serve with the rice and soup. She looked sternly at Sadaku. You are eleven years old and should know better, she scolded. You must not call it a carnival. Every year, on August 6th, we remember those who died when the atom bomb was dropped on our city. It is a memorial day. Mr. Sasaki came in from the back porch. That's right, he said. Sadaku, Chan, you must show respect. Your own grandmother was killed that awful day. But I do respect Opa-chan, Sadaku said. I pray for her spirit every morning. It's just that I'm so happy today. As a matter of fact, it's time for our prayers now, her father said. The Sasaki family gathered around the little altar shelf. Opa-chan's picture was there in a gold frame. Sadaku looked at the ceiling and wondered if her grandmother's spirit was floating somewhere above the altar. Sadaku-chan, Mr. Sasaki said sharply. Sadaku quickly bowed her head. She fidgeted and wriggled her bare toes while Mr. Sasaki spoke. He prayed that the spirits of their ancestors were happy and peaceful. He gave thanks for his barber shop. He gave thanks for his fine children. And he prayed that his family would be protected from the atom bomb disease called leukemia. Many still died from the disease, even though the atom bomb had been dropped on Hiroshima nine years before. It had filled the air with radiation, a kind of poison that stayed inside people for a long time. At breakfast, Sadaku nosily gulped down her soup and rice. Masaharu began to talk about girls who ate like hungry dragons, but Sadaku didn't hear his teasing. Her thoughts were dancing around the peace day of last year. She loved the crowds of people, the music, and the fireworks. Sadaku could still taste the spun cotton candy. She finished breakfast before anyone else. When she jumped up, Sadaku almost knocked the table over. She was tall for her age, and her long legs always seemed to get in the way. Come on, Mitsu-chan, she said. Let's wash the dishes so that we can go soon. When the kitchen was clean and tidy, Sadaku tied red bows on her braids and stood impatiently by the door. Sadaku-chan, her mother said softly, 
We aren't leaving until 7.30. You can sit quietly until it is time to go. Sadako plopped down with a thud on the tatami mat. Nothing ever made her parents hurry. While she sat there, a fuzzy spider paced across the room. A spider, a spider was a good luck sight. Now Sadako was sure the day would be wonderful. She cupped the insect in her hand and carefully set it free outside. That's silly, Masaharu said. Spiders don't really bring good luck. Just wait and see, Sadako said gaily. Chapter 2 Peace Day When the family started out, the air was already warm and dust hung over the busy streets. Sadako ran ahead to the house of her best friend, Chizuko. The two had been friends since kindergarten. Sadako was sure that they would always be as close as two pine needles on the same twig. Chizuko raved and walked toward her. Sadako sighed. Sometimes she wished that her friend would move a bit faster. Don't be such a turtle, she shouted. Let's hurry so we won't miss anything. Sadako-chan, go slowly in this heat, her mother called after her. But it was too late. The girls were already racing to the street. Miss Sasaki frowned. Sadako is always in such a hurry to be first that she never stops to listen, she said. Mr. Sasaki laughed and said, Well, did you ever see her walk when she could run, hop, or jump? There was pride in his voice because Sadako was such a fast, strong runner. At the entrance to the Peace Park, people filed through the memorial building in silence. On the walls were photographs of the dead and dying in a ruined city. The atom bomb, the thunderbolt, had turned Hiroshima into a desert. Sadako didn't want to look at the frightening pictures. She held tight to Chizuko's hand and walked quickly through the building. I remember the fire. I remember the thunderbolt, Sadako whispered to her friend. There was the flash of a million suns. Then the heat prickled my eyes like needles. How can you possibly remember anything? Chizuko exclaimed. You were only a baby then. Well, I do. Saduko said stubbornly. After speeches by Buddhist priests and the mayor, hundreds of white doves were freed from their cages. They circled the twisted, scarred atomic dome. Saduko thought the doves looked like spirits of dead flying into the freedom of the sky. When the ceremonies were over, Saduko led the others straight to the old lady who sold cotton candy. It tasted even better than last year. The day passed too quickly, as it always did. The best part, Sadugo thought, was looking at all the things to buy and smelling the good food. There were stalls selling everything from bean cakes to chirping crickets. The worst part was seeing people with ugly whitish scars. The atom bomb had, turned, had burned them so badly that they no longer looked human. If any of the bomb victims came near Sadoko, she turned away quickly. Excitement grew as the sun went down. When the last dazzling display of fireworks faded from the sky, the crowd carried paper lanterns to the banks of the Ota River. Mr. Sasaki carefully lit candles inside of the six lanterns, lanterns, one for each member of the family. The lanterns carried names of relatives who had died because of the thunderbolt. Sadaku had written Obachan's name on the inside of her lantern. When the candles were burning brightly, the lanterns were launched on the Ota River. They floated out to sea like a swarm of fireflies against the dark water. That night, Sadaku lay awake for a long time, remembering everything about the day. Masaharu was wrong, she thought. The spider had brought good luck. Tomorrow, she would remind him about that. Chapter 3 Sadaku's Secret it was the beginning of autumn when Sadaku rushed home with the good news. She kicked off her shoes and threw open the door with a bang. I'm home, she called. Her mother was fixing supper in the kitchen. The most wonderful thing has happened, Sadaku said breathlessly. Guess what? 
Many wonderful things happen to you, said Uku-chan. I can't even guess. The big race on field day, Sadiku said. I've been chosen from the bamboo class to be on the relay team. She danced around the room, gaily swinging her school bag. Just think, if we win, I'll be sure to get on the team in junior high school next year. That was what Sudoku wanted more than anything else. At supper, Mr. Sasaki made a long speech about family honor and pride. Even Masaharu was impressed. Sadok Sadaku was too excited to eat. She just sat there grinning happily. From then on, Sadaku thought of only one thing, the relay race. She practiced every day at home school and often ran all the way home. When Masaharu timed her with Mr. Sasaki's big watch, Sadaku's speed surprised everyone. Maybe, she dreamed, I will be the best runner in the whole school. At last, the big day arrived. A crowd of parents, relatives, and friends gathered at the school to watch the sports events. Sadaku was so nervous, she was afraid her legs wouldn't work at all. Members of the other team suddenly looked taller and stronger than her teammates. When Sadaku told her mother how she felt, Miss Sasaki said, Sadaku-chan, it is natural to be a little bit afraid, but don't worry. When you get out there, you will run as fast as you can. Then it was time for the relay race. Just do your best, Mr. Sasaki said, giving Sadaku's hand a squeeze. We'll be proud of you. The kind words from her parents made the knot in Sadaku's stomach loosen. They love me, no matter what, she thought. At the signal to the start, Sadaku forgot everything but the race. When it was her turn, she ran with all the strength she had. Sadaku's heart was still thumping painfully against her ribs when the race was over. It was then that she first felt strange and dizzy. Scarcely heard, she scarcely heard someone cry. You team won! The bamboo class surrounded Sadaku, cheering and shouting. She shook her head a few times, and the dizziness went away. All winter, Sadaku tried to improve her running speed. To qualify for the racing team in junior high, she would have to practice every day. Sometimes, after a long run, the dizziness returned. Sadaku decided not to tell her family about it. She tried to convince herself that it meant nothing, that the dizziness would go away. But it didn't. It got worse. Frightened, Sadaku carried the secret inside her. She didn't even tell Chizuko, her best friend. On New Year's Eve, Sadaku hoped she could magically wish away the dizzy spells. How perfect everything would be if she didn't have this secret. At midnight, she was in her cozy bed quilts when the temple bells began to chime. They were ringing out all the evils of the old year so that the new year would have a fine beginning. With each ring, Sadaku drowsily made her special wish. The next morning, the Sasaki family joined crowds of people as they visited their shrines. Miss Sasaki looked beautiful in her best flowered silk kimono. As soon as we can afford it, I'll buy a kimono for you, she promised Sadaku. A girl your age should have one. Sadaku thanked her mother politely, but she didn't care about a kimono. She only cared about racing with a team in junior high. Amidst throngs of happy people, Sadaku forgot her secret for a while. She let the bright joy of the season wash her worries away. At the end of the day, she raced Masaharu home and won easily. Above the door were the good luck symbols Miss Sasaki had put there to protect them during the new year. With a beginning like this, how could anything bad happen?